500 million years ago, a small amphibious creature left the sea and came onto dry land. But to survive this alien habitat, it had to change. A shell to keep out predators, a trail of mucus to ease its path across the arid land, and two sets of genitalia to double its chances of getting laid. And here in my left hand is the result, the helix aspersa, the common or garden snail. In my right hand is its big brother, the helix aspersa maxima, and making its way slowly across my chest is the helix pamasia. Moving down towards my navel, a variety of snails gently fight over the lettuce leaves I've placed around my tummy button. Running along my inner thighs, another 15 or so graze on a mix of porridge oats and sesame seeds. In between my toes and in other places, I've put bits of cuttlefish bone. The calcium is good for their shell, and it tickles. It's not a sex thing. Oh, it's a sex thing. The delicate folds of soft skin, the dizzying aroma when you plunge away in. There's nothing like a red rose, except female genitalia. The rose clearly symbolises the lady pubis. Funny. I think I prefer the symbol to the real thing. This is the sheep that will give me the wool, that I'll spin on my wheel to make me the yarn, to put on my loom and weave into the next three yards of my family tapestry. At Home with the Snails, written by Gerard Foster, starring Geoffrey Palmer and Angela Thorne. The tapestry starts by the new loo and wends its way down the stairs and out to the back door where it climaxes with the final voyage of Virginia Woolf, our old car, so-called because she never got past 60. 437 inches of Fisher history from Rose's placenta party, we were rather wacky in those days, through holidays, gang shows and sad times like Alex's 2-1. But the next instalment will see Alex triumphant. Alex shedding his winter coat and embracing the new. Alex finally leaving home and moving into the shed at the bottom of the garden. I think I'm going to be happy here. My snails are happy. They're all having more sex. Except Dale Winton. I worry about Dale. He never seems to do it with anyone. I don't do it with anyone, but I'm not a snail in a shed with 300 other snails all up for anything. I'd like to be. I'm trying to live like a snail. I'm only eating lettuce and oats and cuttlefish bone, and when I want to go up to the house, I slide there, very slowly, up the garden path. Amazing how you cut down on unnecessary journeys. I only bother when I'm very, very hungry. He's taking pictures of them while they mate. God knows where he gets it from, this compulsive wireism. Wish I'd got a camera in there, but the research grant wouldn't stretch to it. Still, the college has been generous. Enough for some tiny microphones and a short-range antenna to transmit the signals to my control room here in the car. It's not a pleasant thing, spying. But I owe it to my family to try and make this book as brilliant as all the others I've written. I'm his father. If I thought for a moment he was being exploited, I'd step in and say no. I'm having a friend to stay for a few weeks. I like having a friend. And I'm not sharing her with anyone else. Excuse me, are you Rose Fisher? Yes. I'm Colette Dupuis from the Business School of Poitiers. Oh, yes, this way. Uh, could you give me a hand? Quickly! Do you Rose Fisher of Rosy Sweets? Look, my mother knows you're here. There'll be presents, there'll be invitations to dinner. Oh, that sounds great. Uh, could you... No, not great. If you see a menopausal lady with a woolly big Ben or a full-size paper mache telephone box... Yoo-hoo! Welcome to England! Keep walking. Come on! Oh, this is nice. Just the two of us. Wine, oysters. Oh, oysters, right. In college, chef doesn't take them out of their shell and boil them in gravy and onions. Well, I was feeling adventurous. Mm. Now that we've got the place to ourselves again, we could freak out, make love on the dinner table. I've got rather a lot on my plate as it is. Oh. Oh, the boy. Hello. On in your little den. Oh, sorry, you in the middle of dinner. I've already had my sunflower seeds. How are the snails? All right. Slide up here? Yeah. <laughs> nice. 
And the rucksack and teeny boppers you're wearing, they symbolise the shell and tentacles. Can we talk about something other than snails? Just taking an interest. Is there any chance of an omelette? come in. Alex, when I gave you that shed, it was on the understanding you were going to be living like a snail. Well, I'm in the shed. Well, you'd better get back there or it won't be yours for much longer. I'm not a real snail. I am a human being. And so are your parents, Alex. We also have needs and desires, don't we, Beverly? Well, he can stay for an omelette. And if it's all right with you, Alex, I would very much like to spend some time with your mother. Oh, well, maybe your father's right. Come on. Shoo! Those oysters did the trick. Oh dear, I feel a bit bad locking them out so we can have a quick... Where are you going? To the car. Oh, right. To right. Oh, right. Sorry about the wind chimes, they piss me off as well, but they're good for stress levels. So, anything you want, I'm just a phone call away. You don't live here? Yes, but I prefer to be contacted on my mobile rather than you knocking on my door. It's just a boundaries thing. I used the phone in the hall to call you in your bedroom. Well, if you could use the payphone at the end of the road. Let's not fall out over bills. The trouble with English is that everyone I know speaks it incessantly. I'm constantly getting sucked into conversations. How are you? Was it a good funeral? What's the weather like on your side of the patio? When I open my mouth, I want it to be for something meaty, not tidbits. With French, on the other hand, I can only say titbits. No, I don't mean the only thing I can say is titbits. I don't think I know the French for titbits. Well, there may not be a French for titbits. But the point is, when I speak French, I enjoy talking about feelings and the weather and dead relations. There's a mental challenge. I feel human. Now, what's the boy out to? I can't believe Dale Winton. There's sex available. And he hides in a corner. Maybe he's holding out for that special someone. Hasn't affected me never having a girlfriend. Most folks would have gone mad if they were still a virgin at the age of 23, but I'm quite happy sitting here in my parents' shed with a load of snails crawling over my naked body. I'm not averse to the idea of sex. Just sex with people. Girls I can't relate to because they're different and boys I don't like because they're the same. I'd be all right if I was a snail. I'd like to be a snail and slide along the floor, leaving a shimmering silken track that I could admire behind my back. And those tentacle things I could wave at my friendy, like arms, I suppose, only more bendy. And carrying that house around, I could crash out anywhere, wherever I wanted to, man, and not worry about my parents and roll with my friendy all night, under a cabbage leaf. Being neither boy nor girl, but both, we wouldn't fight. We'd be the same. We'd both be winners at the game, squelching and squeezing our mutual parts, quadruple genitalia and single heart. That's quite good, I might write that down. Sorry, I... It's a compliment, I suppose. I find you uncontrollably attractive. 37 seconds. I'll just clean up. You know, sex is supposed to be like conversation. I wish conversation was like sex. Two minutes at the end of the day, I might get this book done. There is a book, isn't there? Yes, there's a book. You just spend so much time in that car. You sit there for hours. I'm thinking. I'm up here watching you down there. It's like Romeo and Juliet by Samuel Beckett. Night. Fine. With a visitor tomorrow, you'll have to say hello. Dinner! You see how it saves on the voice? Dinner! And visitor! All right, all right. This is Colette. Say hello, George. That's all you need to do. Alors, c'est vous la française, comment ça va? Vous parlez français? Uh, un tout petit peu. Alors, le ton fait pas beau ici, hein? C'est pareil à Poitiers. No. See? Oh, see, it's interesting, sir. George. I'm talking to Colette. Yes, rambling on about your book. I'm sorry, Colette. Well, the weather's not so good over here, is it? I've already said that. You were talking about the weather? Yes. Well, don't. You're going to bore the poor girl rigid. What's the weather like in Poitiers, Colette? The same as here, she just said. 
Well, I can't speak French, can I? Colette, what's the weather like in Poitiers? It's the same as here. No. Yes. That is interesting. Alors, ça va bien chez Rose? Uh, tout est comme il faut? Oui. Il y a juste une étagère dans ma chambre qui s'est cassée, mais à part ça. Je passerai demain pour la réparer, si vous voulez. Dad, what are you saying? Uh, Colette said there's a broken shelf in her bedroom. I said I'd come round and fix it. What? You put up a shelf? You've never done that for me. Well, I'm not actually going to do it for her. So why did you say you would? Because I know how to. Sorry, got a bit carried away with titbits. Not your titbits, Colette, though they are... I won't be saying anything else for the rest of the meal. Good. Welcome to England, Colette. This is what I was trying to give you at the station when Rose pulled you into the taxi. Is it a nice thing? Yes. Rose said it's a funny joke. No, it's a present. <sighs> Thank you. What is it? It's a wig. It's a very small wig. It could be worn as a moustache. It's the famous English wig. What? Like the famous English sense of humour, but it's a wig. In what way is this wig famous or English? I'll tell you. It's made from hairs of famous English people. Is that why there's so few of them? You seem to be talking, George. What I did, Colette, was I wrote off to lots of well-known English people, explaining to them that you were coming over and could I have a hair from their head. I got replies from Claire Rayner, Jimmy Savile and Duncan Goodhue, who it turns out doesn't have any hair at all. But I thickened it out with some from myself. And A-L-E-X. Who's Alex? Your English is good. Oh, well done, Mum. Alex doesn't eat with us. He's, uh, he's got a thing about snails. He eats snails. He eats in the shed. He lives in the shed. He's free to come and go as he pleases. Go, go away. away! Any food going? He's lying on the ground. I think he's injured. Shall I open the window? I'll open the window. Ow! Oh, you're right. He is injured. Oh, let him in, Rose. All right. Get in and walk. I'm trying to. You nearly knocked me out, you psycho. Hello. I'm Colette. Hello. I'm... Somebody slap him. I'll do it. First time I've been up Lover's Lane in the dark. I felt like a walk after dinner, a proper walk with my legs. And something told me it would be all right. And it is. It's full of snails. All heading the same way into the village. Like this is some ancient snail trail and they're all drawn to this village, drawn to the allotments and gardens and traps. Hello? Is that Alex? Yeah. What are you doing here? I don't know. I just felt like a walk. See the village. Is it me, or are, are there lots of snails round here? Oh, never really thought about it. Good news for you. Why? They said you like snails. Me? No. You've got one on your face. Oh, get off. Maybe subconsciously. I find sex with my wife grim, futile, messy, which is why, subconsciously, I want to get it over with as soon as possible. So, how do I con my body into thinking intercourse is a worthwhile activity? Well, she said herself it was like conversation, so I shall do it in French. <laughs> eh bien, est-ce que la terre est bougée? Oh, one minute twenty-seven. I'll just clean up. You're improving. Anyone would think you'd been having lessons in French. Oh. I was thinking about Alex. Well, that's where it's all going wrong. You know, he can be quite good-looking in the right light. Yes, that freak alignment of sun, moon and Blackpool illuminations may not happen again in our lifetime. Colette's got nice hair. Oh, I don't think a girl like Colette's going to be interested in Alex. Well, she's nothing special. Oh, she's la creme de la creme. He wouldn't know what to do with her. He'd be sticking snails up her... Or oh, interesting experiment. I'm not doing that. No, Alex and Colette. It could happen. With a little help from his friends. <laughs> they eat snails, don't they, French people? That's probably why I feel this connection. I don't fancy her. I find it creepy the way she was nice to me in front of my family. I just can't think of her without these butterflies in my stomach and all the time she's got snails in hers. Oh, imagine kissing her and her breath tasting of snails. Imagine being a snail and sliding down her throat and being warm inside her. I, I think I should write her a letter telling her how much I don't fancy her and never will, just so there's no misunderstanding. Dear Colette, should I be writing a love letter on a word processor? 
No, I suppose it should be more personal. Um, dear Colette, your breasts are irrefutable, your lips cohesive, your curves lead me on irresistibly to the logical conclusion that no, no, no. It's not from me, it's from the boy. Can't leave him to sort it out for himself. Must engineer a rendezvous and observe the terrible cock-up he makes of it. Feel sorry for the poor girl. Dear Colette, shall I compare thee to a rose? No, come on, no girl is that good. Ah, another day. Thanks, Colette. You're a good worker and a good friend. Can I get you the toilet now? No, no, you've waited all day. You can wait another minute. Now, tomorrow I'm going to a sweet makers conference in a place called Birmingham. I'm not going to be back till late, so I'm leaving you in charge. Now, I know you like sweets. I've seen you looking at them. I suspect you may be counting the raisin bangs. Well, I've counted them too, and there are 134. OK, so let's not let petty things spoil a good friendship. Right? Right. Oh, and I'm first. It is my toilet. Hello? Oh, uh, hello. Um, I don't know whether you remember me. Alex, um, I've got your letter. Yeah, that's why I called. That wasn't from me. Um, someone's going around writing letters <laughs> from me. <laughs> it was really funny. Oh, that was from me. Do you want to come round to dinner tomorrow? Rosie's away. Um, yeah, but, um, look, I do like snails. That's OK. Can I buy them round here? No, no, I... I, I keep my own snails. Uh, well, do you want to bring some of yours for us to eat? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Fantastic. Fantastic. The boy wangles a date for himself, and I didn't even send the letter. Not such a freak, after all. No, come on. Think positive. He'll mess it up. The sun is out. The birds are singing. Time to plant the equipment. Bonjour. Bonjour. Come to fix that shelf. I found this old camping stove in the shed. I'm not cheating and making myself a proper meal. I'm practising eating snails, because that seems to be the plan for the evening. Oh, this is mad. I've saved all these snails from my father's garden, and now I'm going to pick one and eat it. I feel like Meryl Streep in Sophie's Choice when she has to choose which of her children should die. Which is a ridiculous comparison. I mean, she was acting. This is real. Oh, well, get a bloody life. Just eat it. If you can eat it, it'll prove you're normal. You're not obsessed. But then, what sort of normal person has to prove they're normal by eating a snail? I am normal. I don't need to practice being normal. I'm just going to turn up there and eat snails because that's what normal people do. So, who do I take with me? Probably need 20 or so. How many snails do you eat in one sitting? Mel Streep had it easy. Ta-da! Oh, hello. Came this morning. A hair. An Alan Titchmarsh hair. Fetch the wig. I'll put it in the fringe, I think. Oh, I can do that. You have still got it. The present I gave you to welcome you to my country. I thought it was a joke. Yes. Goodbye, Colette. Oh, there was one other thing. George is behaving a little more oddly than usual. If he does come round here and... That's his coat. Yes. Is George here? He is here, but I wasn't supposed to tell you. Where is he? In my bedroom. He's supposed to be in college. <laughs> Mr Fisher? Down in a sec, just cleaning up. I don't believe this. George? George? You haven't got a gong, have you? No. George? George? Beverly? I know what's going on. You know? How could you do this to your family? I'm sorry. I couldn't resist the temptation. Oh, I don't mind you having an affair. It's hmm? the fact that you had to do it behind my back and right under my nose. What? All right, I'm mixed metaphors. I'm, I'm upset. You're deranged. Beverly, what would a stunning, adorable French girl see in an old don like me? <laughs> well, there's experience, wise hands. Oh, I'm not having an affair. I just came round to fix the shelf. I found these in your waste paper basket. Drafts 1 to 17. This is an invasion of my privacy. It's your writing, George. I'm not having an affair with the girl. Then what are you doing writing her letters and cleaning up in her bedroom? Well, I'm writing... All right, I'm having an affair with her. So, given she thinks we're having an affair, really, I suppose we could, couldn't we? 
I don't follow. Well, now she's gone through all that hurt, it um, seems rude not to. Nespa? That's very charming of you, but I like Alex. Well, you don't know Alex like I do. And um, he, he's a good chap. Alex, I was just leaving. Remember, she's French, so speak nice and clearly. Project. I can't believe you turned out so normal with parents like that. Yeah. I've got the snails. That's a lot of snails. I couldn't choose between them, so I brought all 300. They all look nice to eat. Yeah. <laughs> you want to come up to the kitchen? I think what we do is take a snail from the bag. Stan Collymore. We put these through the body like so. That's how I normally do it. And we pull the snail gently out of its shell. Oh. <laughs> Voila. He's still alive. Oh. He's moving. He's still alive. You killed him. I thought you'd done. This before. Yeah, I have. So your turn. No, I can't. I'll give you something if you do. Really? What? Uh -huh. Right, we take a snail from the bag. Julia Somerville. We put a skewer into the body. And we pull the snail gently out of its shell. Hey, well, uh, oh, kill her, quickly kill her. You kill her. I can't. No kill, no kiss. Oh, God. <laughs> Should we do another one? Well? Hmm. A couple more minutes, I reckon. Can we do in two minutes? I suppose we should carry on where we left off. See how far we got. He's eaten a snail. He's going to regret that. I hope he is. Oh. What are you listening to? Oh, Radio 4. Some uh, diaries of a colonel's wife in India. Oh, I've got that on in the kitchen. Come inside. No, I can't. Don't feel bad. It was just a fling. What? Oh, yes. It's a, it's a weight on my mind. I still love you, George. Can this wait? All right, put it on. No. <laughs> oh, my God. She's been ravished on the table by the serving boy. What? The colonel's wife. Uh, Beverly, I need to think. I thought the archers was racing, but this is... Why they have to subject us to this wave of... I was listening to that. Beverly! No, it's not bad. That's 40 seconds. Oh, are we going for a ride? This can't happen. Oi, oi, yes, yes. So, George. Oh, Are you sure that's the Colonel's wife? Uh, no, it's the au pair from Poitiers, Strasbourg. No, she got Denny Belly and went home in a port -a I know that voice. It, this isn't Radio really 4, is it, George? All right, I'll tell you the truth. It's a tape, isn't it? You're listening to a tape of Colette in bed with you. Me? No, it's... Is it you? Yes or no? Yes. I, I think it shows how strong our marriage is, that he can be honest about it. It's not a sex thing. She's not just a younger, prettier version of me. He can talk to her as well. So, it would be churlish of me to deny her a place in the family tapestry. I'm giving her eight inches, which is more than George will ever give her. Gallows humour. The first part is Colette arriving at Dover. She actually came by Eurostar, but I thought a cross-channel ferry would be more stirring. The second half shows George begging his family for forgiveness while Colette sails back to Calais with absolutely no hair. Bald as a coot. Hm, glad of a wig now, I think. Oh, none of this has happened. It's just a joke. A curious thing, hearing my son making love better than me. A mixture of pride and envy. Not much pride and a lot of envy. Alex is locked in his shed. Doesn't even come out to collect snails from the garden. I deal with them myself. Pellets and traps. It's a joyless execution. My roses are blooming, but my book is dead. Can't you say I'm going? 
What, back to France? I can't leave with Rose anymore. Yeah, I didn't like it much. Well, see you around. Do you want to come with me? Come to put you. Well, live with you. Uh, I like you, Colette, but I don't think I could handle this snail thing of yours. You're the one who likes eating them. Well, I said I did, because you do. Terrible what you do for a shag, isn't it? Not that you were just a shag, but... I keep snails, not to eat, but because I like them. I've never eaten a snail in my life before the other night. You're French, don't you do it all the time? No. I always felt sorry for them. You like snails? Yeah, I like them. I love snails. I am a snail. Well, you're a bit more hardcore than I am. Maybe I can get into it, if you come to France. Colette, we ate snails. We ripped them out of their shells, chopped them up and ate them. What kind of a basis is that for a relationship? How could I live with you when every time I see your face I think of eating dead snails? Well, what nice, though, weren't they? Nice? They were the most delicious thing I've ever tasted in my life. They were like chocolate and wine and anchovies all rolled into one. That's my punishment. I've tasted manna from heaven and I can't ever taste it Say again. Say the poetry. Punishment for what? Eating a bit of jelly with a shell on top? If they're that nice, eat them. They're only snails. I'm glad you said that. Yeah? Yeah. It makes it so much easier to say goodbye. We tried it on the table. Two minutes, seven seconds. And the next three hours scrubbing creme anglaise out of the carpet. Beverly, that is. Which left me free to get on with the book. Feeling more positive. Colette's gone, Beverly's satisfied, and Snail Boy has emerged from his shell. I couldn't believe it when I woke up in bed with Dale Winton. Thought he was dead. Turned out he'd been so scared of sex he'd been hiding under the lawnmower for a week. And now all the other snails were gone, Dale Winton had finally come out. For a moment I thought about Colette. Wondered if I should pop Dale in my mouth and catch the first train into the tunnel. But that would have been the easy way out. So I picked up my trowel and my bucket and I came out here. I'm not going to give up on Dale. I'm going to find him a friendly to roll with all night under a cabbage leaf in the shed at the bottom of my father's garden. At Home with the Snails was written by Gerard Foster and starred Geoffrey Palmer as George, Angela Thorne as Beverly, Gerard Foster as Alex and Miranda Hart as Rose, with Magalie Domek as Colette. The programme was produced by Jane Batu.